it is Sam from DIY Huntress and I am so excited to show you how I turn some store-bought lumber into this DIY storage cabinet with adjustable shelving. I cannot wait to show you how I built this one, so let's get started. I have been scheming up this build for a while now and thanks to my amazing friends at Dat Products, I was finally able to make it come to life. In case anybody was wondering what my design process looks like. Superficial, loose leaf paper, doodles, and some numbers. This is, uh, this is what we're working with. Now, while this build started on a rogue piece of loose leaf paper with some rough drawings, I promise it did not end there. In fact, I put all of my crazy ramblings for this entire build into a concise blog post with step-by-step -step tutorial, as well as printable PDF plans and a full list of all of the supplies and materials that I used to make it happen. And you can find the link to all of that below this video in the video description. Now, as you can see to get started, I began by cutting a full sheet of three quarter inch plywood into more manageable pieces to work with. And I did this all by myself with no help from my helpers. Hey, you boys here to help? Or do you just want snacks? Huh? literally the worst shop helpers ever they're so lucky they're cute or i would have fired them a long time ago but for real um managing a full sheet of three quarter inch plywood in my small shed shop sometimes feels really honestly impossible so i do like to break down these sheets of plywood on my floor using my track saw and also using some insulation underneath the boards and then i bring those boards on over to my table saw and cut them down to their final sizes now, in terms of order of operations, I actually started by focusing only on the actual cabinet frame itself. And once those pieces were cut, I then added some iron on edge banding to any of the seams that would be exposed on the cabinet itself to make the plywood pieces look like solid pieces of birch wood. Now, this is definitely a step that is so much easier to do before assembly because it is so much easier to trim and fine tune the edge banding when the pieces are individual pieces instead of when they are assembled as a box. And honestly, although adding edge banding is time consuming, it actually is pretty easy. It just requires some heat from an iron and then I like to trim and sand those edges flat and it looks beautiful when it's done. So after cutting all of the pieces for the cabinet frame and then adding my edge banding to all of those exposed edges, I then began to line up my pieces in the order that I felt happy with. I kind of wanted this pseudo continuous grain look. It actually didn't really work out the way that I wanted to just because I didn't use mitered corners, but whatever. Nonetheless, I figured out what order I wanted my pieces to be in and then began to make some markings for the joinery. And for this build, I used dowel joinery to hide all of the joinery within the cabinet. As always though, if you're making a project like this, the joinery is personal preference. So you can use pocket holes, you can just use wood screws and glue, you could use biscuits, you could use dowels, you can use whatever makes your heart happy. For me, I don't know why, I just really wanted to use dowel joinery, probably because it is what I had on hand in my shop other than just my pocket hole jig and I wanted to try something different. But anyway, I'm pretty sure you didn't come here to hear me ramble about joinery. So back to the build, in order to drill these dowel holes, I just use a dowel drilling kit. And all in all, this kit comes with a guide and a drill bit and a collet so that you are drilling at the correct length. And some of these cabinet pieces required me to drill in the edges, others required me to drill in the faces. I just made sure to triple and quadruple and honestly probably check like 66 times that everything was going to line up before I actually began to drill these holes and then eventually dry fit the entire cabinet together. And the good news here is that there were no mishaps and everything was fitting together beautifully. So once I was pretty confident with the way that this cabinet was going to assemble, I then actually decided to surprisingly think ahead a couple of steps and I ended up pre-sanding all of these pieces down to 220 grit because they're definitely gonna be a lot harder to sand once the cabinet is actually assembled. But once all of those pieces were sanded, it was then time to permanently attach them together using the dowels and some dap wood glue. 
So at this point, I realized this cabinet was going to be way too tall for me to manage once it was on my workbench because I am so short. So I decided to move the entire build to the floor and then attach everything down there. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at those edges and you're like, Sam, those plywood edges are exposed and you just spent so much time adding edge banding and you are correct. Right now, the cabinet is backwards. So you are looking at the back of the cabinet. Right now, this is the front of the cabinet, but the back of the cabinet was not edge banded because I'm going to be routing a groove into it later for some plywood and you're not gonna see it anyway. So I decided to just focus on saving all that edge banding for the front. But anyway, back to the build. So at this point, it was time to clamp the cabinet pieces together and a quadruple check for square before leaving it overnight to dry and then coming back to work on it the next day. Honestly, you guys, I could not have picked a colder week to work on this thing. It was like 20 degrees in my workshop every single morning. I really can't wait for this workshop makeover and to fully insulate the ceiling of my workshop. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's focus on this cabinet build first. After removing the frame from the clamps, I was then able to kind of triple check my measurements for the cabinet doors. And then I was able to use some of that leftover three quarter inch plywood to cut down the doors to size. I mentioned this in my plans, but I definitely find that measuring and cutting the cabinet doors after the frame is built is the most accurate way to be able to get those doors to fit. Now at this point, it was time to cover those raw edges of the plywood. And although I used edge banding on the cabinet frame itself, I decided to forego the edge banding on these cabinet doors because last time I used edge banding and then painted my cabinet, they just didn't mesh very well. So instead I actually decided to use some DAP wood filler to fill in all of the crevices on those edges. I then allowed that to dry for a couple of hours and then I came back and sanded everything nice and smooth. The benefit to doing this as well is that as I waited for the cabinet doors to dry, I was actually able to move on to building the base of the cabinet. And I did this by using some two by twos that I purchased at the home improvement store along with the rest of the lumber for this build. Now, as I was cutting down the two by twos on my miter saw, I just felt like they were a little too beefy for the vision that I had for the cabinet. So I did decide to bring them over to my table saw and trim them down a little bit. I believe I took about a quarter of an inch off of both sides of these pieces just to make those squares a little slimmer. And although I use dowel joinery for the cabinet frame itself, I did actually opt to use pocket holes for the base of the cabinet because these pocket holes are super easy to hide once I begin to assemble the base and then install the base to the cabinet itself. And honestly, I love pocket holes, but I don't love the way they look aesthetically. So I do try to be kind of cognizant of where they are in my builds and I try to hide them as best as I can. Sometimes that means I have to get creative when I am joining these pieces together, which is why you see me using a ton of wood glue and some clamps. Now, luckily because the space will be screwed in to the cabinet with countersunk screws, I was able to hide all of those pocket holes on the top side of the base. But I do have a diagram for where I place these pocket holes in the principal plans in case you were interested. But at this point, it was time to run a dry fit to see how it would look and to see how stable everything was. And naturally, my stability test is sitting inside of my cabinets. I'm in a glass case of emotion. Name that movie. P.S. It's my favorite movie. Baxter! Fun fact of the day, I pretty much quote Anchorman on a daily basis. But anyway, I decided at this point that I love cabinet. Sorry, I had to. And since everything was fitting together so well, it was then time to paint the base of the cabinet. So this was super simple. I sanded the entire base to 220 grit and then started with a dark primer and then moved on to using about three coats of a black flat paint and I sanded in between each coat. I then focused my attention back to those cabinet doors where I hand sanded all of those edges super flat and then it was time to paint those doors as well. So because I wanted the front of the doors to have this dimensional slatwood looking appeal, I did decide to paint one side of the doors black and then I really wanted to keep the other side of the doors that wood color that would match the rest of the cabinet. So to protect that back side of the cabinet doors, I decided to tape the back and then add some paper. That way there wouldn't be any overspray from the black paint because that's kind of a hot mess when you have to sand that all away. 
But just like I did for the base of the cabinet, I sanded these doors down to 220 grit, started with a dark primer, and then worked my way over to three coats of a flat black paint. I actually did let these doors dry for a full 24 hours before moving on to the next step. Now, if there's one thing I have learned to do as a weekend warrior, it is that I have learned to multitask pretty well in my workshop. So basically in between each one of those coats for the doors, I then moved on to finish sanding and then pre-conditioning the entire cabinet to prep it for stain. So honestly, since working on my Murphy bed, I'm pretty scarred when it comes to staining birch wood. And I decided to use the pre-conditioner in hopes of basically making sure that the stain didn't dry blotchy. But spoiler alert, because you know that those are always in my videos, even after using this wood conditioner, I actually didn't love the way that the stain that I used finished and dried. And I ended up having to do a second coat of a different finish later, but we'll get there in a little bit. So at this point, the bulk of the cabinet was built, but one other thing that I really needed to start focusing on were those slats for the cabinet doors. Originally, I really wanted to use quarter inch by one and one eighth inch molding from the home improvement store for these slats, but honestly, it was so expensive. I don't know why they were so expensive. So instead, I actually decided to mill my own trim using some one by twos that I had laying around my shop from an older build that I never actually used. And I'm not gonna lie, I saved so much money by doing this myself. So if you do have access to a table saw for a build like this, I definitely recommend making your own molding instead of buying it from the store. But anyway, after cutting all of these molding pieces, it was then time to kind of dry fit the design that I wanted for this cabinet. So I did place those cabinet doors into the cabinets on these like spacers and then began to space out all of my pieces just to make sure that they would fit perfectly. Of course, during the dry fit, everything fit perfectly because that's what happens. And then when it was time to actually permanently attach these molding pieces to the doors later, they didn't work. The spacing didn't work. I don't know what happened. I still don't know what happened. I ended up making it work later, but We'll get there when we get there. At this point, I then removed all of those trim pieces and sat by the space heater, put on some tunes, jammed out and sanded everything to 220 grit before then staining all of these pieces and allowing them to dry to prep them for their permanent attachment to the cabinet doors. Okay, here's the deal. I don't love the way that these dried. I feel like they dried super, super blotchy. In fact, I don't like the color of the cabinet either. So I am going to try to use gel stain because gel stain goes on pretty thick and it has like a really fun, nice, rich color. So I'm gonna use this gel stain and I'm going to add the gel stain on top of the pieces that I've already stained in order to kind of even out the tone and see what happens. I think it's gonna work out really well. Let's go for it. So now that everything is stained, I'm kind of circling back to that issue that I had with the stain not drying as smoothly as I wanted it to. So I decided to add a really thin layer of gel stain to the top of each one of these pieces, as well as to the cabinet itself. And this honestly worked so well. This is a trick I've used so many times before and it's literally never failed me. Much more even tone. I actually really like the color a lot better too. I'm happy. Let's finish the rest of these and move on. At this point, I had let everything dry overnight and then came back to the cabinet and it was time to start permanently affixing those slat wood pieces to the cabinet doors. Now, originally my plan was to attach these pieces using wood glue and nails, but I hated the way that the nails looked in these slat wood pieces. I wanted them to look more streamlined. So I decided to try my hand at using DAP's Weldwood Contact Cement Spray Adhesive. And basically it is a contact cement product, but it is in spray form. Now, in order to use this product, I taped off any areas that I did not want to be sprayed, but I did spray the door itself and then also added some spray to the back of the slat wood. I then let these pieces sit for about five minutes until they became tacky and then firmly pressed them together with those spacers in place. And honestly, these held so firmly and so beautifully. I'm so happy with the way that these things turned out. And although it took a little bit longer, I continued to use this process for both of those doors and the doors turned out beautifully. 
At this point though, once I was happy with the front of those doors, it was time to focus on the back of the cabinet doors. And I did this by removing that painter's tape, just sanding down the back of the doors lightly and then applying the same exact stain to the back of the doors that I did to the rest of the cabinet. And yes, while shamelessly watching reality TV on my iPhone in my workshop. And after allowing everything to dry, it was then time to move on to just applying a final finish to all of my pieces. And I did this by using a spray on polyurethane. After allowing all of that final finish to dry, I then moved on to more of like fine detail work for the cabinet build. And some of that included actually adding adjustable shelving for the inside of the cabinet. One thing I did have to be aware of though was that I am in setting these cabinet doors a little further back than usual just for aesthetic purposes. So because of that, I did have to use a spacer just to make sure that these adjustable holes would still work for the shelf that I wanted to install inside of the cabinet. But once that spacing was figured out, it was then time to move on to cutting that shelf for the inside of the cabinet. And I did this using some leftover three quarter inch plywood from that original full sheet of plywood at the beginning of this video. And although the original plan was to add edge banding to this piece, I had actually run out and was way too lazy to go to the store to pick up more. So I decided to use some leftover trim from the base of this cabinet and attach that to the front of the shelf using glue and brad nails. And then I stained the entire thing. By this point in the project, it was definitely time to start focusing on assembling this cabinet. And one of the last steps that I really needed to do in this build process was to route out a groove in the back of the cabinet for my one quarter inch plywood backer to fit. And when I used my router, basically there were still some rounded edges. So I used my chisel to just clean out those edges and to make them super sharp so that when I install my quarter inch piece of plywood later, everything fits perfectly and the back is flush. But once I was done, it was basically time to just start really assembling things. So I decided to attach the base of the cabinet with some screws. And I did this using some countersunk holes through the bottom of the base and into the cabinet. With the cabinet then being assembled, it was time to return my focus to those doors and I needed to add some openings for the hinges in order to install them. So I used a cabinet hinge jig that I've used in many of my builds before. I will link this one as well in the blog post in order to create openings for those frameless inset hinges that I needed to use for these doors. I then just followed whatever instructions that came with the hinges that I used for this build and then installed those doors to the cabinet with those specific instructions. Now, in terms of making sure that the spacing is consistent on all of the edges of the doors, I usually use the playing card trick that I have learned from my friend Brad over at Fix This Build That, but of course I could not find my playing cards. So I decided instead to use some fold up pieces of sandpaper and that worked just as well. And like I mentioned earlier, because I was actually in setting these cabinet doors a little further than usual, I did end up using a couple of spacers just from some leftover one by material that I had in my workshop. I clamped those into place to make sure that the doors would line up the way that they needed to. And they actually worked really, really well. The only thing I really needed to add or adjust when installing these doors was a piece of molding on the inside of the cabinet. And this just prevents the doors from like folding in because when you're using inset hinges, they do naturally want to kind of cave into the cabinet. But I ended up just adding these using some wood glue and some nails, and then I stained them to match the rest of the piece. And they're honestly not even in the way at all. At this point, I was so excited and I was on cloud nine and then that quickly died down when I realized that the spacing in the slots of the cabinet were not going to work. Oh no! What happened? Back to the drawing board, ugh. Long story short, I was banking on having that missing piece in the middle perfectly fit there with the spacing that was consistent throughout the rest of the front of the cabinet. Obviously that didn't happen. So after going back to the drawing board and also collaborating with some creative friends in this community, I then decided, hey, this thing needs a handle. So I used some leftover one by material that I had in my workshop to create a thinner, but like also deeper handle to attach to 
just one door using wood glue and also some nails and basically now this functions as a handle so i actually have a place to grab to open the cabinet rather than just like hoping for the best and I've quoted him before, but in the words of Bob Ross, we don't make mistakes, we make happy accidents. And to be honest, I'm actually happy about this happy accident because it worked out really well, in case you can't tell by my happy dance. But once I had figured out this awesome little workaround, all that was left for this cabinet build was to attach that back panel to the groove that I cut out with my router using my nail gun and then once that was solidly in place it was then time to just add in that adjustable shelving that i had cut earlier in the process if i can keep it real with you guys for a second here whenever i build cabinets they totally intimidate me and then i remember at the end of every single cabinet build i'm basically just building a box with two doors and that always reminds me like hey i can totally do this and honestly, I've been brewing up this idea for a cabinet for our records for a while now and have probably been sitting on this idea for way longer than I should have because it felt intimidating. And now that it's done, I'm like kicking myself for taking so long to make this happen. And I don't know, I guess what I'm trying to get at here is that like, it's really awesome to do things that intimidate you and then end up succeeding at them regardless of all of the mistakes you may make along the way. Like, hey, this build was not perfect, but it ended up turning out just as I envisioned it would. And I'm so proud of that. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this build and this project as much as I did. And if so, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. I am so excited to show you all the things I have planned for 2021. And I cannot wait to make those ideas come to life with you all by my side. As always, thank you so much for all of the support and the love that you give me. It is appreciated more than you know. I will see you very soon with a new project. But until then, friends, happy DIYing.